Hi everyone, we're back for another tutorial. This is Caprice number 30 by Campignoli. Um, so you, if you've read my blog, um, I wrote in it that I feel like this one reminds me a little bit of um, J.S. Bach's Sheep May Safely Grace um, because this has this um, really calm, um, uh, sort of a calm affect, but the, these pulsing um, 16th notes. Um, so the big idea with this one um, is the portato stroke, um, also double and triple stops. Um, there's some difficult finger work in here for your left hand, and um, I apologize for being um, so late in posting this and, the, and number 21, which will be next. Um, I had a left hand injury, which I think was partly due to um, stretching after, you know, getting back into playing caprices after um, taking a long break over the holidays. Um, so my fourth finger uh, would not um, work and I had to take a break and um, work it back up slowly. So if you ever find that kind of pain in your hand, um, definitely stop and rest it as much as you can um, before getting back into playing. So, um, so yes, the portato stroke at the beginning um, it's right off the bat, um, we get into it. So, I would just suggest um, to start, if you're not very familiar or comfortable with the portato stroke, to just um, practice that with open strings. And then you can incorporate the double stops into it um, without uh, the left hand as well. Um, once you're secure in your bow arm, um, it tends to, your hands tend to affect each other, right? So if your left hand is like out of tune, that might affect how you use your bow because you don't feel secure in your intonation, but vice versa. If you don't feel secure in your bow technique, that can affect how um, well you can, you're able to use your left hand. So always try to separate them if you don't feel comfortable with one or the other. So, right, um, and then we can, um, so we, we can um, figure out what strings we're playing, right? So, so there um, we would go. Then we get into the double stops with the portato stroke, really fun. Um, and I'm using my whole arm to do the rotation down, if you can see that. Um, your bow arm um, technique should always come from um, elbow drops and lifts, depending on what string you're playing. So. Um, if you have to drop to a lower string or adjust to that angle, make sure it's coming from your arm and not from your wrist or something like that. Um, the other th interesting thing about this is that the portato stroke is displaced from the beat. So um, you have to practice that in too, right? You have to pra practice the pulsing still happening on the beat while the bow changing happening off the beat. <laughs> I always tell my students, um, your expression should come from um, how much bow you use more than the pressure. So if you want to emphasize a note, use more bow. You can also use more pressure, but use more bow and get that air in. Um, the other thing about this stroke is that um, there is a lot of air. So there's a lot of um, um, pulsing and releasing. So we, we pull the string and then we release. Um, and that's gonna give you the kind of sound you want. Um, okay, so um, so we get into some hairy stuff here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, go from measure um, three. Um, so here we're doing triple stops um, 
displaced rhythm with the bow. Um, and so again, it's all about the bow use. Um, you're coming from, let's see, I should have written the bowings and do that. Um, it, it all works out and you can check out my blog, thecampagnoliproject.com, where I've annotated the original manuscript or the original copper engraving. And, um, and so the bowing works out. Don't try to fix anything. Sometimes you're gonna be playing up bows on these triple stops. <laughs> In fact, you're always going to be playing up bow. So um, you'll have to take that apart. And it involves a shift too. Um, so there it becomes really important to do that portato stroke properly so that you have that separation um, between the first note and then the triple stop because you have to shift for that triple stop. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Um, you can practice for the left hand, take out the bowing, take out the weird bowing, right? Um, um. <laughs> then um, practice the bowing separately, put them together, okay? Um, so the double stop passage coming up, kind of um, measure five going into measure six, um, it's helpful to practice this um, as two separate lines um, be between the top line in your left hand and, and the bottom line. Um, so this is pick up of um, pick up to measure six. Okay, um, and then we have the bottom line, which let's see. So. Um, Now make sure that you're playing in the correct position that you would be playing for those double stops. So um, putting them together. It helps to release the sound at the end of the slurs always. Um, again, we're coming out of, um, we're in the classical period here, coming out of the, um, a bit of looking back to the Baroque with some of these um, caprices. And um, there's a little bit more release in the sound. So don't be afraid to, to use that to your advantage um, instead of holding them. It, it gets a little bit too, don't romanticize it. Just, just let, it, let it release and let it be calm. Um, so, um, let's see, I'll go on from there. Always a really nice taper at the end of your, um, at the end of your phrases. Um, so this next part, I, I just love how um, we have two lines going through most of this caprice. Um, you get to be your own accompanist. Um, Kim Gignoli is really good at writing like that. Now, you need to find any place where you can leave down a finger, do that. Um, so here um, you have this, at measure nine, you have the D um, staying in your left hand, and then you have the C staying on the top. So leave those fingers down, unless it's impossible. I think it's mostly possible. So um, this is something that I work on my students with a lot too finding any place where you can make it e easier for your left hand to be in tune. So what's harder is when you take a finger off and then you've lost that stability. So if you can leave it on, and, and this passage is a perfect 
uh, measures nine um, going on for four measures is a perfect example of how you can make your intonation really stable and make it easier for yourself by just leaving those, those fingers down. Um, okay, so getting into uh, measure um, sort of 14 going on to the end of that repeat, um, it sort of goes with the, it's, it, we lose the portato stroke and um, the line just goes a little bit more. I'll start measure 13. <laughs> the phrase go on get more intense there um, there's a lot of fingering to work out um, but um, again you can you can separate the lines as um, as you need to to practice that area um, going on to um, sort of the second half of this at measure 17 um, yeah this is this is was for me the hardest part of the piece because of the tenth coming, the, the getting the second um, second position octave and then going into a tenth, the measure after that, um, really hard for the hand um, to get in tune. Um, let's see if I can do it. Um, sorry if I can't uh, today. <laughs> The fourth finger you see is like not curved at all. Um, but the, the first finger has much more um, range of motion than the fourth finger. So you need to use that to your advantage. On the other side, my thumb is just completely straight, um, relaxed, and just getting out of the way, um, but still, you know, on the neck as usual. Um, one thing to really identify is we're coming from this octave F. We come back to it. Down to E, that's a half step. Up to G is a whole step. So um, it's important to know how far your fingers have to move. And then what I do is this big rotation here. So I'll back up a little bit so you can see it. And it's about ex as extended I, as I can possibly be. Um, but the, the trick is to find a way to do it that doesn't kill your hand. Because if you have pain, that's not a good thing. Um, and then um, I like that he put these little decrescendos um, on the F octave and then your 10th, um, it lets you release the sound, release the tension in your hand before you go on. So that is a really important thing to observe. Um, again, still projecting that sense of calm that I think this Caprice um, is trying to, uh, that Campagnoli was trying to project through this Caprice. So um, let's see. Um, I'm going to go on to the final section, which is measure 25. Sorry about this. Um, so in this section, um, we're kind of getting into a little bit more harmonic interest, right? Um, I believe in my recording, I did not play the F sharp at measure 25, the second F sharp. So um, <laughs> I'm very sorry for that. Maybe someday I'll re-record -re it with the proper note. Um, <laughs> Twenty-seven. Um, we have we have the, these 
tense chords. We have um, a D a D five chord in measure twenty five, a um, G minor chord in measure twenty six, and then we go back to a nice calm F major. Um, that's where you can kind of like reset because it's a long buildup um, to the the end before the da capo. Um, and it really does move along there. I feel like when I perform this, um, I just want to, like, it's just pushing me along. Um, it's an interesting feeling. So here. <laughs> shape so um, if you want to hear the good recording of it go to um, the link below um, so it goes on like that and then um, it really builds up um, to uh, getting into measure 31 right uh, is our peak um, measure 29 measure 30 um, let's see if I can play this measure 29 the third beat <laughs> And then so we get back into our nice C major. Um, so as you're practicing these, um, Again, separate out your left and uh, your two left hand lines. Um, with the right fingering, um, and then. Just to get, um, just to hear them um, by themselves um, and then putting them back together. So you can take time on that shift going into second position um, since it's it can be a little bit um, unstable feeling sometimes getting that um, it, it's going from a let's see. A, let's see, would it be a minor third to a major third? It's not the same interval going to those two. So just to recognize that in your hand. So that pretty much covers the main points from my perspective. I tend to be more technical on, um, on these tutorials, but um, right back if you would like to see um, other things or a different caprice. Um, I hope it, it, you found it helpful and I hope you enjoy this one. It's really a, a beautiful piece as, as all of the caprices are, but, um, everything is, every, everyone is so unique. So, um, enjoy and I'll see you soon.